Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks. Today I wanted to do an updated guide for the new champion point system from a damage dealer perspective. With the Blackwood chapter, there were a few new champion point nodes added as well as some changes to the maximum number of tiers for many of the passives. I do have a video already covering all of those changes. If you're interested, I'll have it linked down in the description, but the purpose of this video will be to show some good ways to spend your champion points and give you a few different paths you can go down to level up. So no matter what champion point level you're currently at, you should be able to reference this video and the charts in the description and see just how to spend your champion points. I'll also have a Google spreadsheet linked in the description that will be kept up to date. So if you are checking this out later in the patch, make sure to give that a glance to see if there have been any tweaks. All right, let's get started. So we'll start with the green tree craft. This section is mostly for non-combat gameplay, such as crafting and farming. Because of that, I won't be doing a specific leveling guide for this tree, but I will point out a few key nodes that will be active in combat, but don't really change your offensive or defensive power. First, we have Rationer, which adds up to 30 minutes to your food or drink up time. Then Liquid Efficiency, which gives you a 10% chance to not consume a potion or poison when activating. Steadfast Enchantment, which can slow down how fast you burn through your enchantments by up to half the normal rate. Soul Reservoir, which gives you a 33% chance to not use a soul gem when you resurrect yourself or someone else. Steed's Blessing, which boosts your out of combat movement speed by up to 20%, which can be helpful to move more quickly between ad waves, and Breakfall, which reduces the fall damage you take. These are pretty much the only ones that are related to combat, but there are some other really good passives in this tree, like Plentiful Harvest, for example, which gives you a 50% chance at getting double resources from a node. But like I said, not a whole lot for combat here. So again, I won't do a leveling guide for this section since most of it is just user preference based on what activities you're doing. The next section is called Warfare. This is where we get the bulk of our offensive and defensive power. Unlike the previous section, this tree is heavily focused into combat, mainly around how much damage we deal, how much damage we take, and how much healing we can do. The mage's head and her hand are the ones focused more on dealing damage, as well as this subtree, Extended Might, then the nodes on the body, and the middle subtree, Staving Death, are focused mostly around resisting damage, and then the nodes on the staff and the left subtree, Mastered Curation, are focused on healing power and unique buffs from healing. Then we have a few in the middle and off to the side that are just focused around general stats like magicka, stamina, and weapon and spell damage. So now we'll take a look at all of the relevant DPS passives in the Warfare Tree, show some total champion point examples for reaching different milestones, and go through a few leveling guides. And again, I will have this all in a Google spreadsheet linked in the description if you want to look through that format. So first are the slotted passives. You can only have four of these active at a time. Again, these are just the ones related to DPS. There are some healing and tanking slottables in the Warfare Tree as well, but I won't be covering those here. If you are trying to play extra cautiously, maybe something you can Consider for solo play or maybe four man dungeons if you do want to check those tanking and healing ones out. So all of these slotted passives will cost 50 champion points each. So the first is Arcane Supremacy, gives you 1300 Magicka, Endless Endurance, 1300 Stamina, Untamed Aggression, 150 Weapon and Spell Damage, and then we have a new one here, Master at Arms, 10% Direct Damage, Deadly Aim is 10% Single Target Damage, Thaumaturge, 10% Dot Damage, and Biting Aura, 10% AoE Damage. We have Backstabber, it's 15% Crit Damage if you're flanking, Fighting Finesse, 10% Crit Damage and Healing, Reaving Blows, 7% heal on direct damage, Wrathful Strikes, 165 weapon and spell damage, but this doesn't count towards your heals, and then Weapon Expert is another new node we have, is 15% light and heavy attack damage. So the top three here might look enticing early on, but they aren't really going to be slotted for DPS in any end game setups. They can't really hold up next to these flat percent increases. So the ones in the bold here are the ones that we'll most commonly see, and these will vary a bit from class to class, but generally Backstabber is always the strongest of these if you can flank, so make sure to have that one slotted for all of those encounters. Reaving Blows isn't really needed in group content, but it can be nice for solo, especially if you aren't running the Ring of the Pale Order. And then we have the non-slotted passives. You can grab as many of these as you can afford. So some of these won't be relevant to your build necessarily, and you can save those for the end if you just have an excess of CP to spend. But there is no limit on how many of these you can take other than having enough champion points. So for the offensive ones, we have Eldritch Insight, which gives 520 Magicka, Tireless Discipline, 520 Stamina, 
Precision, 320 critical, which is about 1.46%. Piercing, which will give us 700 offensive penetration. Flawless Ritual, give us an additional 60% chance to apply magical status effects. And then Battle Mastery, the same 60% for martial status effects. Then we have War Mage, which adds 100 weapon and spell damage to magical attacks. And Mighty, which does the same 100 weapon and spell damage to martial attacks. And for the defensive ones, we have Quick Recovery, which is 2% healing received. Preparation, 10% damage reduction against PvE enemies, Hardy, 2% physical reduction, Elemental Aegis, 2% magical damage reduction, and then Blessed is 2% healing done. So this preparation one is by far the most bang for your buck out of all of these, with the caveat that it only works against PvE enemies. So now I'll go through some of the champion point goal examples. These will vary slightly depending on the order that you do end up choosing to go with leveling up, but it should give a decent idea of some milestones. So we'll have most of our resistances with that 10% from preparation. You can get that as early as only 120 CP. And then most of your resistances and most of your damage, all of your slottables filled in at 810 CP, most of your resistances and full damage at 1080 CP, full damage and full resistances with the 2% Hardy and Elemental Aegis added in at 1200 CP. And then all of your passives, including healing done, healing received, and your off resource at 1560 CP. So from this point, it would just be about convenience in unlocking more slottables to be able to quickly slot them in or out without having to respec your champion points. So to put this in the perspective of a trial group leader, let's say my group is working on Trinity runs, the no death hard mode speed run achievements and trials, and we're needing a replacement. I think I'd probably look at that 810 CP mark as probably the minimum there. I wouldn't really want to go below that, but as long as I'm confident in the player's ability, 810 CP really is the majority of the way there. And Beyond that, just very small increases. So I think if you are going for score pushing though, maybe that 1080 to 1200 mark is more likely to be the minimum you'd look for. For just standard veteran, not hard mode, I'd say you could probably start at 160 CP once you have a gear setup going. All right, so now we'll go through the order to take these passives. The first path we'll go through is the more balanced and my recommended leveling path for a DPS. So we'll start off here with 10 points into Eldritch Insight if you're a Magicka build or Tireless Discipline if you are a Stamina build. And just remember the CP shown here is the total champion points earned because you do earn one Warfare point for every three total points you earn. So in order to spend 10 points in the Warfare tree, you have to have 30 total champion points. So I hope that clears up any confusion there. I had a few questions about that with my previous champion point guide, so I just wanted to get that out of the way up front. All right, moving on, we're gonna put our next 10 points into quick recovery. And the reason we're doing these first two is because we have to take points into those to unlock the pathway to preparation is where we'll spend our next 20 champion points. So like I mentioned earlier, this is the point where we unlock most of our mitigation. And then next up, we'll do 10 points into precision, which unlocks the pathway to backstabber, which is where we'll spend our next 50 points. And this is our first slotted passive. And then our next 50 points will go towards our second slotted passive, fighting finesse. After that, we'll move into the subtree extended might to unlock piercing, which gives us offensive penetration, but also unlocks the pathway to Master at Arms, which will be our next 50 points spent on our third slotted passive. And then our next 50 points will go into Deadly Aim, which is the fourth slotted passive and our final slotted passive. So at this point at 810 CP, we do have the majority of our damage unlocked and the majority of our mitigation. After that, we'll go ahead and finish off the Precision Passive by putting 10 more points into there, and then also finish off our Eldritch Insight Passive if we're a Magicka build, or Tireless Discipline if we are a Stamina build. Then we'll unlock Flawless Ritual on a Magicka build, or Battle Mastery on a Stamina build, and just the 20 points in there to unlock the pathway to our next node, which is War Mage on a Magicka build, or Mighty on a stamina build. And then we'll go back and finish off our points into Flawless Ritual or Battle Mastery. And it'll be 20 more points we spend into there to finish off that magical status effect chance or martial status effect chance. 
And after that, we'll go back to our defenses and pick up Elemental Aegis for 20 points and then Hardy for another 20 points to get our Magical and Martial damage reduction. Then we'll fill out Battle Mastery with our next 40 points for Magicka setups or Flawless Ritual on Stamina setups. Then we'll fill out Tireless Discipline with another 20 points on Magicka setups or Eldritch Insight for Stamina setups. And then our next 30 points will go either into Mighty or War Mage. And then finally, we'll finish it up with just 10 more points to finish off quick recovery and 20 points into blessed and just keep in mind these slotted passives shown are just examples they may be swapped with others depending on your class and your current situation and this is just one possible route feel free to adjust some of this based on your own preferences all right, so for this next path, I'll just show the full chart here instead of going one by one since they are all the same passives, just in a little bit different order. So for the full damage up front leveling path, we're pretty much just moving the preparation passive back until after we have all of our damage already and taking some of our off resource damage stuff before the small mitigation boosts of Elemental Aegis and Hardy. Again, this isn't necessarily the route I'd recommend as that preparation passive is so big, but if you are feeling confident and want to grab your damage first this is an option for you just remember as a dead dps that doesn't just mean you're doing no damage but someone else as well that is stopping to res you so might be a better team play if you just get that preparation passive if you do find yourself on the floor a lot and then finally, I also included a path in the spreadsheet just for testing on the trial dummy. This doesn't include any defensive stuff, so you can just max out your offensive power in the best route possible. And again, same as all these other ones, the slottables may change slightly depending on your class. All right, well, that's going to wrap up the warfare tree. So finally, on the right side, we have the fitness tree. This has a lot of defensive type stuff as well, but more focused around recovery and hardiness rather than simply taking less damage. In this tree, we'll find stuff that will help keep us in the fight longer, such as more max health, more armor, health, stamina, and magicka recovery, and other resource management stuff like block, sprint, and roll dodge cost reduction. There are a few things in here as a DPS that will help out a good bit with our survival and sustain, but nothing that will really be impacting our damage. All right, so let's go through the different passives in this tree. I did try to consolidate this chart into anything relevant for DPS here. There are quite a few that seem more PvP or tanking focused, so I did not include those. So for the slotted passives, again, we can only have four of these at a time. So we have Boundless Vitality, which gives us 1400 health. Ironclad gives us 1731 armor. Rejuvenation gives us 150 health, magicka, and stamina recovery. Bloody Renewal is 1500 stamina on a killing blow. Siphoning Spells is 1500 magicka on a killing blow. Strategic Reserves, 30 health recovery per 10 ultimate. Shield Master is 10% shield cost reduction. Bastion is 15% bigger shields and damage to shields. Spirit Mastery, 33% reduced time to resurrect an ally. And then Expert Evasion, your next roll dodge is free and this has a 30 second cooldown and now for the non-slotted ones you can grab as many of these as you can afford most of these won't really give you a noticeable impact as a damage dealer so really after we grab our main ones the order you can take these in will be highly preferential so we have defiance just 220 break free cost reduction Tumbling, 240 roll dodge cost reduction. Sprinter, 40 sprint cost reduction. Hasty, 4% sprint speed. Hero's Vigor, 560 health. Tireless Guardian, 40 block cost reduction. Fortification, 4% block mitigation. Nimble Protector, 6% movement speed while blocking. Savage Defense, 90 bash cost reduction. Bashing Brutality, 120 increased bash damage. Tempered Soul, resurrect with 10% more resources. And then a few champion point goal examples for this tree. We can have our health maxed out all the way at 414 CP. All of our mitigation, including block mitigation, maxed out at 834 CP. And then all of our core cost reduction stuff is finished at 1218 CP. All right, now we'll go through the leveling path. So we'll start out with Boundless Vitality to get our max health with our first champion points. This will be our first slotted passive. Then our next slotted passive will be Rejuvenation that gives us 150 health, magicka, and stamina recovery. And then we'll take Sprinter and Hasty next to unlock our pathway to Hero's Vigor to finish up with our max health. And then depending if we're magicka or stamina build, we'll either take Siphoning Spells or Bloody Renewal here as our third slotted passive. And then 
Ironclad as our fourth slotted passive. Then we'll put 10 points into Tireless Guardian here to unlock our pathway to Fortification to get our block mitigation. And then after that, we'll max out Tumbling and then Defiance to get our Roll Dodge and Break Free cost reduction. And then after that, we'll go back to Hasty and finish off our Sprint Speed. So after that, we'll be at 1,008 CP and we'll do Tireless Guardian for our next 10 points to finish that one off. And then Savage Defense will be our next 30 champion points spent. After that, we'll go to Bashing Brutality to increase our bash damage by 60 per stage. If you are bash weaving, it doesn't really add a lot of DPS anymore, but if you are, if that is something you're doing, you might want to move this one up earlier, but uh, I don't think a lot of people are really bash weaving anymore nowadays. And then after that, we have Sprinter, which reduces the cost of our sprint. And then right here, so I prefer to put 10 points into Shield Master and 10 points into Bastion to unlock the route to our next passive. Um, there is a little bit shorter route if you want to put 10 points into Piercing Gaze. However, this passive is not relevant for PvE in any way. So ultimately those 10 points end up wasted in the long run. Whereas you could spend 20 points into Shield Master and Bastion and those points you might actually fill those passives out after this down the run. So it's a little bit more points spent, but I think overall less wasted points in the long run. So that opens up the path to the next passive, which is Tempered Soul, which gives us more resources when we're resurrected. And then Nimble Protector is the final one, which increases our movement speed while bracing by 6%. So this one's only six points. You could slide it in a little earlier if you wanted to. Uh, it doesn't really do much though, just 6% movement speed while you're blocking. So really up to you though. It's it's so cheap if you wanted to get that before Tempered Soul or before something else, then go for it. And again, these slotted passives shown are just examples. These may be swapped with others depending on your current situation. And again, this is just one possible route. This is just probably the route that I would go, but feel free to mix it up and adjust it based on your own personal preferences. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope that helped give you a good idea of how to place your champion points. Again, like I said, treat this as a baseline, swap it around how you want, but I hope this gives like a good core starting area for you. I will have the specific slottables to choose for each class in my DPS build videos I come out with, though the general champion point leveling process is gonna be pretty much the same across all classes. A big thanks to my current Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. If you'd like to see how you can support the channel through Patreon, I'll have a link in the description below. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Privy League Guild on PlayStation's EU server, Cougar is Bay in the Cougar Town Guild, Gandalf, Blondie Joes, and Strydig. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, bye.